Jesus went to the synagogue and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor and to proclaim freedom to captives. The Gospel of the Lord. It's lovely to see you all and thank you for being here. And, uh, my name is Ben Hughes and just have a few short announcements that perhaps will help us as we continue with our novena. On Sunday next at 7 p.m. we have our special remembrance mass for babies lost from the womb or in infancy. And in order to participate fully in this mass, you will have here at the Shrine of St. Church uh, a remembrance box where we are inviting you to write down the names of those that you wish to remember on the cards provided there and to replace them in the box. And perhaps if in fact the loss was an early pregnancy and the child was not named, you're simply invited to give your child a favourite name or a neutral name so that your loved one will be remembered. On Monday, the 8th of December, we have Liam Lawton participating with the Redemptor Senior Choir here and that concert will be in aid of the Dundalk Simon community, in particular remembering Christine Halco who died in the care of the Simon community. Tickets are for sale at the reception at 20 euro each. Tomorrow we celebrate the wonderful feast of St. Jared Magella. You're welcome to join with us for that and just a reminder that all pious objects will be blessed during all those sessions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme for the Novena this evening is very simple. It's called The Church of the Streets. The Church of the Streets. We just take a few moments now to reflect on how we, in fact, can relate to that theme in our own lives. The Church of the Streets. Jesus of Nazareth, St. Alphonsus, the founder of the Redemptorist Congregation, Mother Teresa, Pope Francis, are among some of the people that represent the church of the streets of life. And all of these people, and of course many more that we know, are distinguished by their ability to bring hope and healing to the streets, the avenues, and the corridors where we walk and talk each day. And the central question for all of us as children of God, as members of the church, the church on the street, the question is how best can you, as a member of the church, as a child of God, how best can you bring a message of hope and healing to the streets where you walk, the homes in which you live, and the places where you work? In the church on the street where Christ lived and worked, one central message we're reminded about in this evening's gospel is that he brought freedom to captives. Freedom to captives. Wonderful, wonderful gift. Perhaps the question is who are the captives in this world today? The reality is that perhaps from time to time many of us are captives. We're captives when in fact we experience a sense of being overwhelmed or disheartened. Then we're captived by some kind of negativity. Some of the big issues that are holding people captive today include sickness, 
of mind, body, or spirit that holds us captive. Other issues like finance, unemployment, and still more issues like low self-esteem, a loss of meaning in your life, a feeling that nobody cares, or a sense of being hopeless. All of these issues hold us captive. And realistically, for many people like ourselves, feelings like these happen to us from time to time. But they should not last forever. And our prayer of support is certainly for anyone here in this congregation or anyone that we love who at this time feel that sense of being captive to any force of negativity or difficulty in their life. And perhaps the question for all of us this evening is, what in fact is holding you captive at this stage in your life? We know from the scriptures that Christ's entire ministry was to release people from captivity and to bring them towards freedom. That great journey from captivity to freedom. And so again, for people who walk the street of life, members of the church on the streets, what does freedom mean to us? Freedom means many things, but it includes that we accept at times that life can be difficult. There's a great freedom in accepting the fact that life can be difficult. It means then that we will not be overwhelmed when we experience it. So firstly, freedom means that we accept life can be difficult at times, not forever. And then we manage it better. Freedom means that with God's grace and your effort, God's grace and your effort, that life can be better. One step at a time. The path to freedom involves minding yourself and minding each other. Freedom involves learning how to negotiate healthy relationships. Freedom also means learning how to deal with difficult emotions like anger, disappointment, loneliness, conflict. Learning how to deal with those successfully is the path towards freedom. Freedom means being aware of how alcohol and drugs and indeed other unhealthy behaviours can impact our lives destructively. Being aware of that and doing something about it is a path towards freedom. Freedom involves asking for help when we are a bit stuck in life. And for many Irish men, young men, middle-aged men, elderly men, for many Irish men and women, some part of that Celtic DNA which we are born with holds us back from asking for the help that we need. The hallmark of a strong, Irish, mature, healthy man is asking for the help that you need and going towards that place of support that will bring you towards a full life 
that is marked by freedom. There is no need to remain silent about the issues that deserve conversation. You don't need to go out on your own. Freedom means that we identify the problem, we ask for help, we go towards well-being. Freedom means that you remind yourself very often that you're loved, that your life has meaning and purpose, that you are resourceful and that you can cope. Freedom means that while life can be difficult, that you remember that for the most part, life is good and people are generally decent. So the question for us as we walk the streets of life under the blessing of God, what do you need to do at this stage in your life so that you can enjoy a healthy, full and free life.